Miss Universe Philippines has finally released the official headshots for every single one of their candidates and today I'm gonna be presenting to you my top 20 standouts. As you can imagine, this was not an easy task because some of the most beautiful women in the country have joined this year's competition. But after doing my assessment and taking several things into consideration, I will present to you my personal picks. My only hope is that you enjoy this video, that you find some sort of value in it. And if you do, go ahead and drop a like, subscribe, follow, share this video, and of course, be part of the conversation in the comment section down below. So let's get into my top 20. Let's get started right away. On the 20th position, we have Miss Laguna Alexandra May Rosales, which if you watched my previous video, I told you she is a friend. I've known her for a long time and she's a very charismatic, sweet girl. I'm really happy to see this fierce side of Alexandra because I know that she can bring the whole package to the table. She even previously won a pageant center around being a supermodel. So for me, this headshot is a perfect representation of who she is and what she embodies. Moving on to number 19, we have Miss Australia. Her name is Kimberly Street. And let me tell you, on my previous video, when I did my standouts from the press presentation, she was actually supposed one of them. However, because I decided to cut it at a top 20 rather than top 25, I was not able to talk about her, otherwise the least guessed too long, but she was definitely one of the candidates that catched my attention during that presentation. I'm really happy to see the consistency going into the official headshots because she looks absolutely stunning and already giving us something completely different than what she gave us during the press presentation. If you remember back then she had the very big voluminous pageant hair, here it's more of a natural wavy curly type of texture on her hair and a very fierce signature smile from the side and staring at the camera. So for me, this was a very successful headshot. At number 18, let's talk about Miss Quirino. Her name is Stephanie Faye Herona, and I really feel like this headshot does her justice. I remember her seeing her in person again during the press presentation, and honestly, I feel like this is a very good representation of who she is naturally. I don't see any major editing, any major alterations whatsoever. The skin looks amazing, I love the minimal makeup, and I think that her expression is very pleasing to the eye. So taking into consideration all of those things, my heart is super happy with this headshot. Moving on to number 17, we have Albay Elaine Bernales. Once again, coming back to my standouts list, so consistency is the key. But this time around, she's giving us more of a mysterious vibe, and I really enjoy this. We have more of a darker background, we have darker shades with the makeup, more of a smoky eye going on, and I really appreciate seeing a different side of her. In the press presentation, she gave us more like creative, traditional look, and here it's more about being intimate and mysterious. So I think this is a step in the right direction, and I cannot wait to see what else she's gonna give us all throughout the competition. Now let's keep going. At number 16, we have Miss Pasig, Selena Alexi Antonio Reyes. Once again, another girl who is giving us a different flavor from what we already saw. In the past, I really compliment her because of her extraordinary physique, uh, the colorful look, yet here she is giving us again more of a darker vibe, really allowing us to focus on the facial features, just the natural beauty of her face, and I'm going to say this woman is just stunning. I appreciate that the team paid attention to every single detail from the makeup to the earrings, making sure that even the shoulders and the clavicle is, you know, highlighted and moisturized and everything looks perfectly put together. So for me, this is a very successful headshot and a way for the fans to be introduced to her as a candidate. Let's go to number 15 on the list, which goes to Miss Southern California, Janet Hammond. I'm really happy to talk about her once again because as I told you before, she is one of the really beautiful girls in person and I love that her headshot really embodies that. I love that the photographer and the editing team behind all of this respect her natural beauty. Again, I don't see anything too distracting in terms of editing or you know enhancements whatsoever. They really focus on highlighting what she already has and working with the natural beauty that she was blessed with, but yet they have included some things for us to look at such as um, you know the little background that we have with the dress. I'm assuming this is fabric from the dress, um, the pending earrings, the nude color that they chose for the lips, and just rocking the natural beauty. What else do you want? This is a headshot challenge, okay? So we want to see you serving face. At number 14, we have Miss Zambales, Anita Rose Gomez. I mean, we already know that Anita is one of the most beautiful girls, not only physically, but facially in this competition. For me, uh, she is a seasoned queen and she knows what she's doing. I am really intrigued by this photo because, first of all, I think that she's wearing a little bit more makeup than the candidates that we have talked about, at least up until now. But it looks so polished, so put together. As I said earlier, a professional, she knows what she's doing. I'm also really intrigued by the facial expression because I feel like she's looking at the camera but not directly into the camera, like slightly to the side. And the expression with the mouth is almost like a... 
I don't want to compare it to like a Mona Lisa type of situation, but it's a very intriguing portrait, which for me is very successful because it makes me wonder, you know, what's the story behind it, what's going on behind the scenes, and I want to just like find out more about her. On top of, you know, the team and Anita already highlighting her natural beauty. So for me, this was definitely a home run. At number 13, we have Pampanga, Cyril Payumo, and she's giving us a little bit of the shoulder with the glam shot and the hand. And oh my God, she looks incredible. I mean, I don't want to be redundant. So I'm not being a complimenting every single time for every single candidate, the, the makeup and the hair and all of those things, because all of them, if they made my top 20, you best believe everything is on point when it comes to those technicalities. I really like for Cyril, similar to the previous girl that I was talking about, uh, the facial expression. It seems to me like she's flirting with the camera, but still giving us, you know, the, the traditional poses that back in the day we used to have for this type of headshots with the hand positioning and everything. So I think that Cyril is one of those girls who also has some experience in the world of pageantry. Uh, she's not a newbie, so she has the experience to bring to the table something modern, fresh, new, while at the same time giving us, you know, the classics and the things that we already know and love about pageantry. So for me, very successful, no complaints at all. At number 12 on the list, let's talk about Miss Northern California, Kyla Jean Carter. And this time around, she is giving us more of an innocent type of look, like effortless, like, oh, I was caught, you know, in the moment. I'm not really trying. And of course, she looks beautiful doing all of the above. <laughs> For some reason, most of the time when I see photos and videos of Kyla, she is always smiling. And that's kind of the expectation because beauty queens tend to smile all the time when they are in public. So it's nice to see a different side of Kyla. I think that this photo is very successful because it really accentuates her facial features. I mean, look at the jawline, look at the chin, the very voluminous lips, the big eyes, which I really adore. And I like the fact that she's going outside of the box and playing a little bit with the arms and the hands and just trying something else, you know? This is a competition which now has 54 candidates. So you always must find what is the little edge, the little thing that is going to set you apart from everyone else. So for me, this is exactly what she was able to do. Moving on to number 11 on the list, we have Miss Davao City, Maria Isabel Pelayo. And I think it's the first time that I get to talk about her here on the channel. And let me tell you, what a beautiful woman. I love the morena skin, the smooth, buttery makeup, the really nice and voluminous hair. I think that all of the elements came together to make her look her best for this particular portrait. I'm going to be honest, if I could remove one thing from this photo, it will be the contact. I would like to see the natural eye color. I don't need to have any enhancements whatsoever because she's already a standout just by herself without needing the contacts. But you know, I didn't want to bring her lower on the list just because of that, because at the end of the day, the headshot itself is still very successful. So let me know in the comments if you agree with me, but I mean, just look at the material, just look at the natural beauty, stand out. Now we are officially getting into my top 10, but before we talk about it, let me know in the comment section if you agree with my pick so far and who is your top three at the moment? All right, so without further ado, at number 10 on the list, we have Miss Cebu, Miss Tiffany Jensen, giving us a little bit more of a mysterious vibe. I mean, I don't know if mysterious is the right word, but usually when I think about Chris, I think of very soft, delicate, almost like princessy vibes, almost like, you know, pastel colors in terms of the palette and stuff like that. But this time around, she's going for the gray tones, for more of the cold colors. And I think that it really suits her. I love that the facial expression is so neutral. She's just staring at the camera, giving us that vibe that she's almost like flirting with the lens, but still in a very innocent way that again, for me, that is her brand. So she's keeping her essence here for the photo. I love that there seems to be some wind situation going on with the hair because it gives it, you know, uh, it makes it dynamic. It adds some movement. So as soon as I saw this portrait, I knew that she was gonna be really up there on my ranking. At number nine on the list let's talk about miss mandawe victoria leslie ingram first time that i get to talk about her here on the channel and this is hands down one of my favorite photos oh my god i did some of my research on her and what i was able to find is that she is more of an artsy girl you know she's really more on the creative side and i'm really happy to see that her headshot which in a lot of ways, it's an introduction to the world, to the fandom, to the country, to the Cabo Bayans, uh, really embodies that. It represents that. This doesn't feel so much like a pageant headshot, but almost like a creative, like a, a fashion, 
like an editorial photo shoot and I love it because that's who she is, that's what it represents and that's how it should be. Whenever the girls decide to present themselves, they should always take any opportunity that they get in order to uh, allow us to get to know them better. I really love the contrast here between the very fair skin and the black color of the fabric. I love that the center of attention, everything brings me to the face, the facial feature, the perfect eyebrows, big eyes, big lashes, luscious lips. I mean, just perfect. I wouldn't change anything about this. At number eight on the list, let's talk about Miss United Kingdom, Cristina de la Cruz Chalk. And oh my God, this girl's face card doesn't decline. I love the facial features, the cheekbone situation that is going on here. Look, the jawline, the lips. I mean, I feel like her face is perfectly symmetrical. I'm gonna be honest, just like I said earlier from Miss Australia, Miss United Kingdom was one of those girls that was supposed to be on my previous list for the standouts during the press presentation, but because of the rankings and just so many girls simultaneously, um, I was not able to put her in the top 20, but to me, facially, she's one of the most beautiful girls so far in the competition, so watch out for her. I like this headshot, it's very effective. I, I mean, as I said earlier, for one of the girls, they have the wind situation going on. It's fun, there's movement. Um, there's nothing crazy going on in terms of facial expression, so, so we can really focus and appreciate every single one of her facial traits. So my heart is really happy to see her standing out, and finally, I get to talk about her here on the channel. All right, everyone, let's talk about number seven on the list, which goes to Miss Baggio Tara Valencia. And oh my God, remember, I told you, this is probably one of the youngest girls of the batch. You know, she gives me very innocent vibes, very wholesome vibes. But with the headshot, she said, uh-uh, I'm going to give you fears. I'm going to give you glam. I'm going to sell you the fantasy. And girl, I am buying every single piece of it, okay? The way that Tara is looking at the camera here is like she desires something. She's looking at the camera asking for that crown. She's not just flirting with the camera. She's not just being playful. She is demanding what is rightfully hers. I love that the entire photo really plays a little bit with the contrast between the cold colors of the background. I mean, it's more on the darker side of things, but uh, with a blue undertone and everything else. I mean, her skin, the makeup, even the light that we have here reflecting on the hair, it's mostly on the warm side. So you feel a duality and combined with the facial expression, it just takes this photo to the next level for me. So without a doubt, one of the most successful headshots. At number six on the list, we have Miss Bulacan, Chelsea Manalo, moving up several spots from our previous ranking. This is definitely one of my favorite headshots because of course, first of all, it sets her apart from everyone else. Wrapping her hair in this fabric and just having it around the neck as well, just makes it feel so elegant. There's a little bit of like old Hollywood glamour. I love that she's presenting herself. She's giving us uh, a different look from everyone else because most of the girls are just staring at the camera. She's actually looking to the side, which is more of a casual approach. It's effortless. It's like she was caught in the moment, but still extremely, extremely flattering. I love how they went big with the jewelry. So the earring here is definitely a statement, which also complements the color of the fabric that she's wearing. Um, and I mean, we have to address the skin situation. The skin is glowing. It's giving me what I expected to give. And I'm gonna give props to Chelsea and to her team because in my opinion, this is one of the least, least edited photos of the batch, which remember, this is a beauty pageant. So sometimes we should limit how much edition goes into these portraits. So I feel like Miss Chelsea did an amazing job at presenting herself under a very interesting light and also just looking absolutely amazing at it, so. Moving on to number five on the list, we have Miss The Gig, Christeline McGarry, looking incredible as always. You know, when I think about Christy, uh, I realize that she has some of the most distinctive facial features of the entire batch. I mean, some of the girls sometimes might look alike if they change a little bit of the makeup, the hairstyling and stuff like that on a league of her own. I mean, in terms of the jawline, the cheekbones, the nose, the eyebrows, the eyes, everything is so herself that I would never be able to confuse her with anyone else. I really appreciate that for this portrait, they kept the makeup very minimal. Again, just highlighting the natural beauty that she already has. So no need to overdo it. Don't fix it if it ain't broke. And I really like as well that she went with a different pose, trying something new, not necessarily looking at the camera. Again, going with the vibes of being like effortless and like, oh, you caught me in the moment type of thing. This is yet again another home run for Christy, which so far has turned out to be one of the most consistent girls of the entire batch. 
in my humble opinion. Let's move on to number four, which goes to Miss Quezon Province, Atiza Manalo, looking absolutely amazing. The first thing that I thought when I saw her photo is it's giving share. Let me know if you see it in the comments, okay? Let me know if you agree with me. It's giving a little bit of those share vibes and I'm living for it. I'm a share stan, okay? I love the flat hair split into just, you know, covering the ears, which automatically bring the attention to the earrings, which honestly, if I have to point out something, it's like my OCD just wanted to go and fix the other earrings so that both are hanging, you know, at the same length. But it's okay. This has nothing to do with the headshot. This, it's just a me problem, okay? I love the makeup. I think that the team really understands Adisa's face and they have learned how to highlight the things that, you know, need to be highlighted. One of the topics that people were talking about when she joined Miss Universe Philippines is like how she's going to rebrand herself from the Miss International image to the Miss Universe image. And I think that so far, Atis and her team have been extremely effective at it. Number three on the list, let's talk about Miss Ilo Ilo, Alexi Brooks, looking absolutely stunning. My God, Alexi looks like a million dollar girl here, you know? First of all, I'm gonna say I'm quite pleased with the direction that the team is going in terms of Alexi's hair, makeup situation, the styling, I mean, there's not much that we can see here in terms of styling, but the little details, you know, matter to me. They went quite minimalistic, nothing crazy going on, no big accessories, but I love the fact that she's wearing golden pearls as earrings. Jewel Mary is one of the biggest sponsors for Miss Universe Philippines, quite literally sponsoring the crown. And you can see them everywhere, even on the graphics of these photos, all of the photos, you can see the golden pearls. So I think that Alexi is being strategic and trying to not only show herself, but also police organization and the sponsors. In a very Alexi fashion, she is giving us a neutral expression, looking at the camera, very calm yet very fierce. So there's always that duality inside of Alexi that I think that at this point, all of us or most of us at least have learned to appreciate and embrace. And again, I just love everything that this girl stands for. So I'm just excited to Keep going in the competition and see what else she's gonna bring to the table. At number two on the list, we have Miss Kaintas, Daisy Gabriel looking phenomenal. Because you know that my girl Stacy, her face card does not decline, okay? <laughs> I actually really love this portrait because first of all, I think she's one of the very few girls, if not the only one that picked up the hair and gave us like a little bun situation going on. I love that it shows the neck, the shoulder, the ears, the earring. I love that there's attention to detail to the point of, for example, the placement of the hand, the color of the nails, which also matches with the jewelry that she's wearing. I like that the background is silver and then the dress or the fabric behind her, uh, it's a pink tone. It just really separates everything, gives me different layers, which I mean in photography is so important. So that's why I can appreciate this photo and say there's a lot of thought going behind it. The makeup is incredible. She looks like a golden goddess, so I wouldn't change anything in that sense. And as I said earlier, Stacy already to begin with, she's working with one of the most beautiful faces in this competition. So already she had an unfair advantage compared to a lot of the girls, if I'm being honest. But as a fan, as a friend, I'm super happy to see Stacy in such a good place, surrounded by such an incredible team that understands her, that understands her vision, her facial features, and that can really make the vision come to life. So let's keep going, Stacy. Laban. <laughs> Finally, my number one pick for the most beautiful headshot of this year's edition of Miss Universe Philippines, it goes to Victoria Velasquez Vincent representing Baco or City. No matter what you're analyzing in this photo, no matter where you look, you cannot take away the attention from Victoria's eyes. And that's one of the biggest assets of Victoria. You know, I really don't understand sometimes uh, some people say that they don't like certain of her looks and whatever um, because of the eyes or the makeup or the way that it's styled. But I just feel like Victoria is, this is one of her biggest assets. It's one of her strengths. It's something that really sets her apart from everyone else. So the moment that I saw this photo, I just knew it's gonna be really hard to top this photo, at least in my personal opinion. Compared to everyone else, this is arguably one of the simplest headshots there's not even any jewelry going on. There's no distractions. There's no fabric. There's, it's a plain gray background, a little bit of hairstyling and makeup, and that's it. And Victoria's flawless facial features, really good eyebrows and incredible eyes looking at you. I also really like this photo because as I mentioned earlier, I feel like a lot of the portraits get to be a little bit over edited sometimes. And when I got to see Victoria in person, to me, this is what she looks like. She is really stunning in person. So I just don't understand sometimes the, the negative comments that she receives because to me personally, she is hands down one of the standouts. And this particular headshot embodies that 
flawlessly. So there you go everyone, those were my top 20 picks for the Miss Universe Philippines 2024 official headshots. Let me know in the comment section if you agree with my comments, my feedback, my criticism, if there's someone that you will add or remove from the list. Let's continue the conversation in the comments down below. Remember, if you enjoyed this, if you find some sort of value and want some more, don't forget to subscribe, to follow, to like the video, and of course, share this with a friend so that we can hype them up for Miss Universe season. All right, everyone, I will see you on the next one.